November 28th, 1974, Thanksgiving Day, divisional rivalry between Washington and Dallas. And on Dallas's first drive of the game, they were stuffed by Washington's defense. After Roger Staubach got sacked, it was time for the Cowboys to punt the ball away, which led to this happening. With everything on the line, the Cowboys pulled all the stops and a surprise pass from punt formation gained 37 yards. Now what you're witnessing here is the only pass ever that punter Dwayne Correll threw in his NFL career. And it's a pretty good pass and it's a pretty good play. It went for 37 yards, it fooled Washington special teams, and the Cowboys wound up getting a field goal out of that. But let's rewind the end of this clip one more time. Look at who made that tackle. That's number seven on Washington. That's Joe Theismann. Yeah, that Joe Theismann. The same Joe Theismann that was named the MVP of the league in 1983. The same Joe Theismann that won Offensive Player of the Year in 1983. The same Joe Theismann that made it to two Pro Bowls, that helped lead Washington to their first ever Super Bowl title at Super Bowl 17, and is widely considered to be the greatest post-merger quarterback in franchise history. So why is he out there on this play when Dallas was punting the ball? Well, as it turns out, when he started his career with Washington in 1974, he primarily saw the field as a punt returner. This is the story about how this future MVP quarterback started off, in all places, on special teams. Joe Theismann was drafted by the Miami Dolphins in 1971, but due to a contract dispute with the team, he opted to play in the CFL for a lot more money. He signed with the Toronto Argonauts for $50,000 a year, and in those three seasons, was regarded as one of the best quarterbacks in the league. During the 1971 season, he was named the top quarterback in the Eastern Conference and guided Toronto to their first Grey Cup appearance since 1952. Considering the fact that there were only four teams in the Eastern Conference, to go two decades without making a Grey Cup is definitely a drought. But Theismann snapped that drought in his first year. He played with Toronto for two more seasons after that, and by the end of the 1973 season, his contract with the Argos was up. Over those three years with the Argonauts, he threw 40 touchdowns and guided Toronto to two postseason appearances. But in those three years, despite being the team's starting quarterback, he did actually manage to have a punt return. Granted, it was one singular punt return for a seven-yard gain, but it was still a punt return. Why this happened, I'm not sure. In 1974, the Dolphins traded away his draft rights to Washington for a future first-round pick. Now, this was at a time where Washington truly did not value first-round picks at all. From 1969 to 1990, Washington drafted a grand total of three players inside the first round. Three players in over a two-decade stretch. That's a topic for another video. Head coach and general manager at the time, George Allen, loved the potential that Theismann could bring for the future. They didn't need him right now, as they had Billy Kilmer and future Hall of Famer Sonny Jurgensen ahead of him on the depth chart. But their time was running out. Kilmer was 35 years old, and Jurgensen was 40 years old, and would retire after that 1974 campaign. It was definitely a gamble to trade a future first-round pick away for a guy who was a third stringer and wouldn't play until a few years down the road. Now, in the long run, it's safe to say that that gamble paid off big time for Washington. The accolades for Theismann go on and on, and he turned out to be a very good quarterback in the NFL for the better part of a decade. In 1974, though, Theismann was slated to sit on the bench. That was, until injuries forced him into action. Though not in the way you might expect. In Week 5, Washington defeated Miami in a rematch of Super Bowl VII, getting the upper hand on the Dolphins by a score of 20-17. In that game, Herb Mulkey returned two punts for 27 yards. It was a fairly solid day at the office for him in terms of punt returning. Anytime you can average over 13 yards per return, you're definitely doing something right. Unfortunately for him, this would be the last time he ever returned a punt in the NFL. 
Mulkey was a really talented return man. He even made it to the Pro Bowl as a kick returner during that 1973 season. But just like that, his NFL career was done. And Joe Theismann, who was just itching to play at this point, asked head coach George Allen if he could fill in and return punts. Allen thought it was a joke, so he gave Theismann permission to be the team's punt returner while Mulkey was out. But then in week six against the Giants, when New York was forced to punt, Theismann ran out there as the punt returner. And Allen at this point realized that Theismann was being 100% serious, and he was shouting at him to get off the field. But by this point, it was too late. Theismann was already out there as the team's punt returner. And that day, he actually did a pretty good job. He returned two punts for 26 yards, averaging 13 yards per return. In fact, he did such a good job that game that he got to remain the team's punt returner for the rest of the season. In 15 opportunities, Theismann averaged over 10 yards per punt return. In Among the other notables, Hall of Famer Lynn Swan made the list at number 5, and Super Bowl VII MVP Jake Scott made the list at number 14. But of those 34 players, Joe Theismann ranked number 16. That's right. Joe Theismann ranked inside the top half of all the players in the league that season in yards per punt return. For some more perspective, in 1973, Speedy Duncan returned most of the punts for Washington, and he averaged 8.1 yards per return. And the year before, in 1972, when Washington made the Super Bowl, Ted Vector returned most of the punts, and he only averaged 5.2 yards per return. Amazingly, Theismann was the best punt returner that the franchise had seen in years. And eventually, Theismann got his opportunity to start at his natural position of quarterback. On October 10th, 1976, Theismann started his first ever game, which was a 33-30 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs. After starting a few games here and there in 1976 and 1977, he took over the starting role full-time in 1978 and kept it until 1985 when the Monday night football game against the Giants happened. But everybody's got to start somewhere. For some, it's riding the bench for a bit. For some, it's a few package plays here and there. And for Joe Theismann, it was returning punts. <laughs> 